What is meaningful conflict and why do so many screenwriters get this wrong? So meaningful conflict, I mean, conflict to me is synonymous with problem. So I remember early in my screenwriting endeavors, I, I had people sometimes say, your script doesn't have enough conflict. And I was like, I don't understand what that means. Like I thought conflict just meant people fighting and arguing, you know, or beating up on each other. But then I came to understand that conflict and problem mean the same thing. So in any story, the audience is most interested and engaged when there's some kind of problem that someone is actively trying to resolve. That's pretty much like scene writing 101, story 101. You always want to be focused on that. And whenever there isn't a problem to be solved or whenever no one's trying to solve it, even if it exists, audience engagement, emotional engagement tends to sag a little bit. So meaningful conflict would just mean conflict that is really related to the overall goal of the story. You know, every story kind of begins with something that makes us go, oh, here's what needs to be solved. Here's the outcome that's being pursued that hopefully I'm emotionally invested. I want to see them reach that outcome. So meaningful conflict would be conflict in scenes then which have to do with that outcome and, and how is it going trying to get to that outcome. Because you could have conflict that doesn't really relate to the larger story goal that wouldn't be so meaningful. It would just be conflict for the sake of conflict. So ideally it's conflict that matters to the story. And you might also have like a B story, like there's a conflicted relationship with somebody who's the ally or the love interest or something. And so you might have meaningful conflict that's advancing the B story it doesn't always have to be about whatever that kind of A story goal is. But to me, the most important thing is you do need constant conflict, which means constant problems, and it should be meaningful to whatever we're all there to try to see work out. What about when people put too much conflict right away? I mean, I'm thinking of, let's say, I know I was really dating myself with the movie Staying Alive. It was great to see. <laughs> it's such a great film, I just have to go to <laughs> Um, when, when John Travolta's character is sort of strutting down the street and he's like, he bumps into Sylvester Stallone's character and it kind of shows like, okay, this is New York City and it's very like tight and you're up against all these people and it's a little bit contentious, but it works because it kind of shows that. But then sometimes I've seen films where there's just too, there's like an argument that doesn't belong in there. It's right away. How do you well, balance? My feeling about the beginning of a movie is that you're mostly trying to get the audience to understand the main character and their status quo life and emotionally get invested in who they are and what their basic life situation is before the big problem has emerged, which will then occupy the rest of the story. That big problem tends to emerge as the catalyst or the inciting event or inciting incident, you know, maybe about 12 pages in, uh, if you use like the save the cat page count. Once that thing happens, that rocks their world and then sets them on a mission ultimately for the rest of the story to resolve whatever happened at that catalyst. Prior to the catalyst, you're just introducing the audience to the main character and their world. And you're hopefully getting them understanding enough about that character that they can start to feel they know them and they know their situation. Writers often have issues with this where they don't really do that very well. They don't stay with the main character and take the time to kind of illustrate what their current life is and make them emotionally accessible to the audience, make us have a reason to want to follow them. That, that term, save the cat, the idea if they save a cat in the first 10 pages, we'll care about them is kind of a half joking, but, but the idea that we, we get invested in the character for some reason that the audience is led to by the writer. Give us a reason to care because we tend to not care about some stranger in a movie unless you make us care. So that's like almost the writer's first and foremost job, make us care. And so it starts at the beginning. So to me, the opening scenes of a movie, the first 10 pages or so, they should have conflict in them because every scene should have conflict. But that conflict should be just the normal conflicts of that character's everyday life kind of up until before the catalyst hits. Even a movie, even a movie like Saving Private Ryan, which opens with the most biggest conflict you could imagine, you know, storming Omaha Beach. Ultimately, that's just illustrating what Tom Hanks' life was right before the catalyst of the movie. The catalyst being he gets the order that you've got to go save Private Ryan. Right. That sets in motion the real story problem for the rest of the movie and the outcome that we all get invested in. Prior to that, we're just seeing, well, what's Captain Miller's life and his unit's life like before they get that order? How do we get up to speed with who he is and what he's dealing with and what's going on in his life right now? He's got a very special version of that, but that's kind of the same thing for everyone, for every movie. So 
you can have conflict, you should have conflict, but sometimes people want to open with something really big where they're already launching the story on page one. In other words, like the catalyst event is happening at the very beginning before we have any idea who is who or what the world of the story is. And I think that tends to be a mistake because the audience needs some time to get up to speed and invested first. Right, and even like, let's say, Big Little Lies, you have Reese Witherspoon, and it's a very, you know, sort of manicured, uh, you know, it seems more pampered life, but there's these little dilemmas throughout, like with the carpool and going to the school and someone's in her way and she's not getting what she wants from her child. And so you you see these little mini conflicts being set up, even though it doesn't seem like the same as, as a war scene. Yeah, conflicts, but not the one big conflict that's going to drive the rest of the, the story from that point forward. And in a series like that, you're also doing that times four different characters, I think where each one of those characters gets some of those scenes in the beginning that makes us go, okay, here's this person, here's their life situation, here's the basic conflicts for them, here's their basic personality, their basic desires, and what's in the way of those desires. Nothing huge has happened to rock their world and start the story, but I get who they are. I get who Nicole Kidman is, I get who Shailene Woodley is, et cetera. So yeah, and that's part of why writing a pilot can be harder because you have to set up multiple characters and you have to do it quickly. So you have to find the right way to make the audience go, I get who they are and I kind of am intrigued and I kind of care about them a little. I want to see where life is going for them. Whereas in a movie, you usually only have one main character and you've got like 10, 12 pages to just do it for them. You don't have to do it for anybody else. In fact, you shouldn't be trying to spend time on scenes about other characters in the first 10 pages, in my view because the whole goal is to get us caring about the main character because we're gonna subjectively experience the rest of the story through their point of view. So it's not about showing us these other people what's going on with them, it's about get us inside their world and their psychology, looking out through their eyes as they live their life. Right, and so with Staying Alive, going back to it, John Travolta checks in, any messages? And he's in this sort of like, I don't know, weekly motel or whatever the, in New York City where he's a struggling actor dancer. And of course the guy's like, no. So it just shows again, this guy's, okay, another week, humble and sort of broke. And you, that kind of sets off his world because that's basically before he meets the Fanola Hughes character. Yeah, it's this is my normal life and here are the problems in my normal life that are just the status quo situation that, and it makes you care about him because he's got this kind of undeserved misfortune. You always feel for the underdog, the person that wants something that they can't have that they're working toward but nobody cares. So that's a classic way to make an audience want to invest in the main character in those opening pages.